Viewers, you're watching Crux of the Matter. For all those ardent champions of secular liberalism, here are a few questions. If India is a truly secular country, how is it that the state has taken it upon itself to manage Hindu temples? If India is a truly secular country, how is it that Muslims are allowed to be polygamous but not Hindus? How is it that in a truly secular country, a Muslim girl can marry after attaining puberty, whereas common civil and criminal laws in India penalize marrying girls under 18? These questions remain unexplained. And there are several unexplained contradictions too many to list here that beg equally confounding questions of the secular liberal ecosystem in India. Truth be told, there are no convincing answers. After all, if all religions are equal in the eyes of the state, such exceptionalism won't exist. But this exceptionalism does exist. And these deviations from constitutional provisions or norms exist because political parties leading governments in the pursuit of vote banks have long indulged a sense of minority, particularly Muslim separatism. There's no greater example of this than the promulgation of the Waqaf Act of 1995 and its sequel, the Waqaf Act of 1995. Let's go straight across, viewers, to Vishnu Shankar Jain, who has been in the courts against the Waqaf Act and get a sense really of how this particular Waqaf Act of 1995 makes a complete mockery of the Constitution. Vishnu Shankar Jain, I understand of course that you are a litigant, you are a petitioner, so what you are going to say is obviously going to suit your arguments. But in the interests of a dispassionate argument, let me be the devil's advocate. So let me ask you this. Vishnu Shankar Jain, why is it that the Waqaf Act is being singled out when there are several other provisions that could be deemed iniquitous, for example? You have several other provisions under the law which differentiate between religions. Is this one being done to grab the properties of the Waqaf Act deprive the Muslim community of stakeholdership in India. See, a very good evening to you, Rahul. And let me be very, very honest with you. I will, whatever I'll say today before you, it will be purely legal. And it is not just my argument. All right, you are absolutely right that I am uh, representing one of set of the petitioners so far as the constitutional validity of Waqaf Act is concerned. But I will, I, whatever I'll say today will be an honest perspective and will be a truly legal perspective. I will only point out those provisions which on the face of it, by any legal luminary, if you will ask, it is against the basic provisions of the constitution. Now, let me point it out. The first thing is, now there are two sources by which any property can be declared as work property under the Waqaf Act 1995. The first source is, a survey which is done in every 10 years under section 4, 5 and 6 and that survey is being conducted by the survey commissioner. Hmm. Who will be the survey commissioner? Nobody knows. The who is the who is What will be the qualification of survey commissioner? It is not mentioned in the act. The survey commissioner will be appointed by the state government. Who will be the survey commissioner? It is not known. The second source is, because the survey is done in every 10 years, the second source is, to, con to induct any property as a work of property is section 40 and the wordings of section 40 Rahul are very very wide it says that if the work of has reason to believe work board has reason to believe that certain property is a work property it will conduct an inquiry and after a conducting inquiry it will declare that property as work property now these are the two sources by which a property is brought within the ambit of work point number one Point number two is, what is the definition of waf under the Islamic law? Now, I did a I did lot of research in uh, this aspect. There are two authoritative books so far as the definition of waqaf is concerned. In Mullah's Muhammadan law, paragraph number 176 and Bailey's dedicated chapter is there on waqaf law. And what is the, me what is the meaning of waqaf? How waqaf can be dedicated? So, the definition is, and I am putting it before you, that any Muslim man 
who is practicing Islam, he can dedicate a property as waka property if it belongs to himself, if he is the true owner of that property. Now, this definition, which is there as a settled Islamic position, as a settled Islamic definition, has been deleted uh, under the Waqaf Act 1995. And this definition was not brought under Section 3, Subclause R in the Waqaf Act 1995. Now, today, what is the amendment looking at? The amendment which has been brought as a bill uh, in the parliament yesterday has tried to change the definition and has said that a person can dedicate a property as Waka property if he is the owner of the property. It is in tune with the Islamic law. So this is point number one. And this is the major source, Rahul, please appreciate that you can only create that property as Waka property if it belongs to you. But this definition was not there in the Waqaf Act 1995. The second point, for creating any Waqaf, if it is your own ownership, you will do a deed of dedication. And after having a deed of dedication, the settled legal position is that once a Waqaf, always a Waqaf, which you hear from various barristers. The point is this, that if you don't have a deed of dedication, Rahul, I put a question to myself. As a lawyer, can, can you ever imagine of a concept as work by user? That if you are using a particular place without any deed, without any ownership documents, without having any proof that when it was dedicated as work, the concept was introduced in the work, Waqaf Act 1995 under Section 3, Subclause R.1, work by user, which is very draconian. So can you, so can you break this down by giving an yes. example? Example. Example is in Ram Mandir case, if Baba does not have a Waqaf deed, of uh, making a mosque there, it was it was said that it is a verb by user. In Gyanvyapi's case, if Aurangzeb does not have proof of um, uh, of creating a mosque there, it was said that it's a verb by user. So in what you're saying is that Bangor, someone Sita can walk a, into a property and say, look, we've been worshipping here. So yeah, therefore it is years, holy ground. And therefore I believe this is a Waqaf property and should be actually handed over to the Waqaf board. Yes, so there are two things. First concept which is there in the Waqaf Act 1995 was that you deviated from the original concept of Waqaf that if you have ownership then only you can dedicate it to Allah. Yeah. You deviated from that concept. Second concept you brought in is Waqaf by user. So if you don't have any document, you say that it is Waqaf by user and from how long you are using, that also is not mentioned in the Waqaf 1995. Suppose you are using any property from past two years. Then also it can be verb by user. If you are using it from past 20 years, then also it can be verb by user. So forget about Vishnu Shankar Jain. Forget about my arguments. I am talking plainly simple what is written in the act. So let me Work very quickly tell our viewers just on this point, very important point that Vishnu Shankar Jain has made. What these unbridled powers that were brought in via amendments in 1995 meant is that the Wakaf board can wake up one fine day to stake claim on land on, for example, which the Supreme Court was standing. So you had viewers, the Waqaf board coming out and saying, no, we want your land. The Supreme Court was stunned. There was a case, the Supreme Court, of course, then ruled. Now, many people will say, how can the Supreme Court sit in judgment of its own matter? But obviously, viewers, uh, if the facts are well established, it can be done. It is a very transparent process. And this matter was thrown. Another point in, town, uh, point in time, the Surat Municipal Corporation building was claimed because it supposedly served as a sarai for pilgrims on Hajj during the Mughal era. Now, no one knows. But again, the user concept that Vishnu Shankar Jain is talking about was applied here. The Waqaf boards have also sent notices to Kolkata's Tolliganj Club, the Royal Calcutta Golf Club, ITC Windsor Hotel in Bengaluru. They've even claimed the entire village in Tamil Nadu, including the temple the temple which predated Islam. So this, viewers, is the reason why many people apprehend that the Waqaf Act, which was amended in 1995, gave unbridled powers to Waqaf to claim lands, grab lands, quote unquote, if you want to listen to those people who want this scrap. Yes, Vishnu Shankar Jain. What are the other reasons? See, uh, see in this, I just want to add one example of Bangalore Siddha Maidan. If you remember, there was an incident that people of that locality wanted to celebrate Ganpati, and it was it came to know it uh, it came to knowledge that this Idga Maidan has been declared as Waka property. When deed of dedication and documents were asked, the argument was that this is work by user. 
so there are many examples so so far as verb by user is concerned now the other example rahul which is very very gross is now i am coming to the position of law power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely this is a settled legal position now kindly appreciate now kindly appreciate section 4 5, 5 and 6 under section 4 5 and 6 the survey commissioner conducts the survey of the vaca property that survey is conducted every 10 years now who, who who will be the survey commissioner no one knows what will be the qualification of survey commissioner no one knows so instead of survey commissioner a collector has been brought in hmm. and it has been mentioned in the amendment bill that collector will do the survey as per revenue law many surveys are conducted in this country and all the surveys are conducted by the collector so that law has been brought in and the earlier law has been replaced now the other portion is very important in this survey rahul which is conducted under section 4 5 and 6 there is no provision for giving any notice to the aggrieved party oh. so suppose tomorrow you give a, you conduct a survey hmm. and you declare my land as a vacant property and issue a gazette notification i will have no knowledge i will have no notice there is no provision under section and i am with lot of sense of responsibility i am saying it today on your channel under section 4 5 and 6 there is no provision to give notice to the aggrieved party and particularly this provision has been amended and it has been said that you have to give notice to the aggrieved party now under section 8 of the vaca fact 1995 and i remember i was in the studio with you when i said this section 8 of the vaca fact 1995 the cost of the survey will be borne by the state government which is in direct violation of article 27 yes Now, because you cannot blur the lines between church and state viewers religion and state